Welcome back to yet another historic brawl deck video. Today our commander is a Lassal Core Sadistic Pilgrim and it's a very simple commander because all it does whenever another creature enters a battlefield under your control, you gain one life and then whenever another creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life. So the entire deck is going to be based around cards that gives us extra token advantage such as Ancient Gold Dragon or cards that give us extra triggers when something dies such as Tasa Karlov or some cards that are similar such as Blood Artist, Zulaport Cutthroat or even Corpse Knight or Cruel Celebrant. And there's a lot of similar cards in this deck that are like it and we also can get a bunch of extra triggers off of Elish Norn, or we can have something like Rabble Rousing or even Hail Fountain to win the game. So let's just get right onto the games themselves. Game one, our hand is looking pretty good. We have the Soul Warden for some early turn plays, then we can go into the Lasso Core to get some extra life gain from it. We also have the Heliod so we can get more triggers for our life gain and our stuff can become a lot bigger, and we also can get lifelink off of it. Then we have the Kaya for later and the Liliana for later as well. We're going against Nico Bolas or Ravager, which is a little bit scary, I would say, because Nico Bolas can be be really really terrifying especially when it transforms itself so let's see what's gonna happen here he swings in with a one two I guess that's fine I don't really want to waste my lasso core I don't really want to trade it at all because it does have death touch so even if he does manage to boost it up quite a bit we can still kill it somehow or we can kill it with death touch and he gave it first strike so I'm glad we didn't do that anyway so we get the righteous Valkyrie we get the trigger off of both the lasso core and soul word we're gonna swing with both because he has it tapped and let's see what he's going to do next because I mean this deck does things a lot he's probably gonna kill something he's probably going to kill the righteous valkyrie the lasso core because he has black and he's running red as well he's just running the perfect colors for destruction he does the surgical metamorph so he gets a copy of my commander which is okay and we get a zuluport cutthroat i think we're going to do heliod here instead i think that both are really good but the heliod with the righteous valkyrie in order to gain a bunch of life is going to be a better play and let's see what he's going to do next he gets the intentive or inventive iteration i should say and let's see if he's going to swing in he's going to electrostatic he's going to do the dragon mantle on it he swings with a 3-3 i'm going to take it all because we can just gain it back anyways it's not that big of a deal we're just get the zulaport cutthroat out here we're going to get a lasso core and a soul warden trigger so both of our heliods will trigger and then we're going to do or our one Heliod's going to trigger twice. We're going to get the Righteous Valkyrie out here. We're going to put them both on the Righteous Valkyrie just to get it even bigger. So the Electrostatic Infantry is a little bit less of a threat. Let's see if he's going to cast Bullis here because Bullis would be a good play. And I'm not entirely sure if he will, which he is. And the breakthrough on the back of the intentive or inventive iteration is a little scary because it can prevent us from casting cards. I'm going to discard the Liliana. I really want the Kaya because the Kaya is just a lot better and we can get rid of things. And we can also get rid of this commander and create a copy of it on our side. So even if the Nico Bolas does become a threat, we can get rid of it pretty easily. So we get the... Griffin Airy out here because I mean it's just a good card so we can get some more triggers off of it because if we give the Righteous Valkyrie lifelink we can swing in and get enough damage in to get another well a 2-2 or 3-3 bird out there from the Griffin Airy so we're gonna swing in with a 4-6 with lifelink he's probably not gonna block with the Nico Bolas because he wants it to transform we're gonna get a Heliod trick and we're gonna put it on the I don't know Soul Warden we have enough life for our Anthem to trigger off of the Righteous Valkyrie so all of our stuff's going to be quite a bit bigger we're gonna get a trigger for both Soul Warden and a Lassal core because of the griffin entering the battlefield we're going to put probably both on the zulaport cutthroat because i mean the zulaport cutthroat's the smallest one or we might put it on the soul warden or we might put it on the bird because the bird also is a really good card because he can't block any well he can't block with it twice unless he gets the living breakthrough out there which is a little scary so we're just going to beef up the bird a little more and we get another well he gets another trigger off of his elasal core which is technically my elasal core because he copied it it's interesting how that works he gets a draconic lore out there so i believe he gets to draw cards off of this yes he does and let's see what else he's going to do here he has quite a bit of card advantage in his hand i don't know if he's going to attack 100 percent or not i don't think he will he does not we're going to play the mural out here which is going to shut him down from countering or killing stuff on our turn which is really good we're going to get our righteous valkyrie to be even bigger and we're going to give it lifelink so it's going to be an 8 10 swinging in let's see if he's going to do anything about it he does not he goes down to 12 life we get one trigger off of heliad and then we get a couple more triggers off of the griffin entering the battlefield let's see if he's going to do anything here he has 12 life i have three flyers which should be able to beat him if we do get another trigger next turn or if we get a land we can remove one of them with kaya so let's see if we can do anything he gets to seize the storm 
she gets a little token out there but we do get a trigger so our mural is even bigger and i don't know if he's able to do anything we get the land perfect we're going to play the kaya right now just to get rid of that nico bolus because that's extremely annoying and it also has hexproof so it's a very annoying or planeswalker to get rid of so we get the nico bolus on our side and let's see if he does anything we make him discard the card from his own commander we're just stealing his own commander like he did to us and let's see if he discards anything good he probably just discarded land or something like that or the little egg the smoldering egg which we get a heliod trigger on it and i think we're gonna swing in with all or two of our flyers just because i don't want to lose any more life of the living breakthrough or if he does have something that has haste and flying we can block it even though we do have the nico bolus and we can't transform it i mean it would just be nice to have his commander a little longer Let's see if he does anything after this, though, because he's at a very hard situation. Unless he gets a couple of flyers or a complete board wipe, he's basically screwed. He's at six life. Let's see if he does anything. He's taken a while for his turn to go through. He's looking at my Heliod. I hope he doesn't kill it, which he does. He makes us sacrifice it, which is extremely annoying. Or exile it, I should I should say. He gets the smoldering egg back out there, which is okay, I guess. I don't think he can have anything that will actually kill it. He swings in with everything, trying to get some damage in, but to no avail because we just have more creatures than him and we can block every one of them without having any of our stuff dying. Or I might as well let the Elasal Core go through because it doesn't matter. And then we get the Kai just on top of that. We're going to get rid of the smoldering egg. We say good game. We make him lose three more life. We swing in with everything, and that's game one wrapped up. Game two, our hand is looking really good. We have the Esper Sentinel, then we also have the Arcane Signet for some extra mana, so we're gonna put the Esper Sentinel out there right now. Shieldred the Apocalypse, an interesting commander, but also a very good one with how black draws quite a bit. It's going to be very interesting how this game going is going to play out because we pretty much have similar decks. He's willing to just kind of ping us down and that's what we're trying to try to do to him. Let's see what he's going to do here. He plays the Virus Beetle, making it discard a card. I'm going to get rid of the Hollow Priest. I don't really need it right now. We get the Jadar. Perfect. So we can start getting a bunch of triggers off of our Elasal Core and Jadar. So we get our Elasal Core triggers twice because when it dies, we get a trigger to ping him. And then when it enters the battlefield again, we get a trigger to gain life, which is really good. Let's see if he gets a grave lighter interesting so we have to sack something we're gonna sack the decayed obviously but we don't get an attack with it which is okay i guess we're gonna get another elastic core trigger to get more life we get the vran out there too so our triggers off of our jadar is going to be absolutely insane because he's going to be taking a bunch of damage off of that let's see if he gets a land out there and he's probably going to play shieldred if he doesn't i'm not entirely sure lonely end interesting he's going to remove our commander but we don't have enough mana to get it back out there again which is a little annoying i think we might go the intangible virtue route with the arcane signet so we can just get a couple more advantage and we did get another land which is pretty good we're going to do the arcane signet then the intangible virtue to make our decayed have vigilance which is kind of funny we're also going to swing with the vran just to get some more damage and we do get the trigger he does deal us one damage at our upkeep but i think we should be able to gain a little bit more life off of it so it doesn't it's not a big threat he gets the shieldred out there which is a little scary that card's very annoying to deal with because of how cheap it is to cast and especially as his commander but i think we might be able to get rid of it either way we get the three three going in let's see if he blocks it if he doesn't it's okay it's still going to kill itself at the end of combat but it, you'd be dumb not to block it which he does and we do get double trigger so we lose three life we gain two he gets a shieldred trigger to where he gets to gain some extra life we might put the smothering tithe out there in case he does any sort of his white shen or black shenanigans and getting extra card advantage off of shieldred so we can get a bunch of treasures like this feed the serpent i believe what that is or feed the infection not feed the serpent that's another card he gets a bunch of life off of that because he basically took nothing because of how black card draw works and he swings it with a two two and he gets a shield with the apocalypse trigger trigger because we drew a card kaya we get we're gonna put it on an elastic core and in case he kills it again we can put it back to our hand which is probably going to happen because he's running well black and black kills everything we get an elastic core and a vran trigger so he's gaining or well, losing a bunch of life and we're gaining a couple of life let's see if he does anything sort of special here i think we're just kind of overwhelming him i'm not sure if he can make a comeback i mean it isn't the end of the game but also he's kind of behind and we do have the smothering tithe and the reverent hop light to get a bunch of triggers so let's see if he can do anything from this point he does get a 3-1 and a 2-2 in the air which could remove our kaya next turn if we don't do anything about it there's the infernal graphs grasp targeting our i believe it's our lasso core so it's just going to go back to our hand because of well the kaya 
and we're gonna take that trigger. We get a Vran trigger, he takes some damage, we gain some life, and we're probably going to, I don't know, we're gonna block the choo-choo here just to get rid of it. We get another trigger, and we get the Reverend Hoplite, and we can get the Jadar trigger. We're gonna put it, we're gonna put the Kaya Ghost Form counter on the Jadar, and he just scoops right there, anyways. Game three, our hand is looking really good actually we have the griffin airy i'm not sure though because of the voice of the blessed it's a little curve worthy but we can get our commander out there there's another land that's always better and there's the other white land that we needed so we're going to put the griffin airy instead of our last core because i feel like we could get some advantage off of that anyways we might do the aketra's monument here mm, i think the last of course is just a little better we're going against joda very annoying deck we're gonna see if he's gonna block if we swing, swing in we're gonna put the oketra's monument out there so our lenda and our elish norn cost a little less and he does block it with his telshar which is okay we're gonna put that lasso core back out there once again let's see if he does anything about it he does not we get the intangible virtue out there so all of our triggers or all of our tokens have vigilance which is really really good and they also are well a really good card they also have an anthem on there out there which is good Joda is really annoying though, but I don't think he has anything that's going for him. Let's see if he exiles anything off of Kaya. He might exile our commander once again, so it's a 7 drop, which is kind of funny, even with our reduced cost. We're going to swing in one at the Kaya and one at, well, himself, and let's see if he does anything he does not. I think he's kind of stumping, or bricking I should say, because Joda should be out there by this point and he does not have it out there at all. And we're going to put the Corpse Knight out there, and I don't think there's much of anything that he can do here. We're going to do ping him a little bit, and there is game three wrapped up. Game four, and it's looking really, really good. We have the Arcane Synod for Curve, we have the Dread Horde Invasion for some extra token making, then we also have the Horn of Valhalla for later, we also have the Smothering Tithe for later, and then we have the Marauding Blight Priest for later as well. We're going against Ragavan. Oh, this is a very annoying deck because of how Ragavan works. It just gives him pure advantage. I don't know why they put this card back in the game, but they did. Let's see what we can do here. Swings with a Gorgoro. That's okay. Gets a champion. That's all right. We're going to put the Arcane Signet out there. We're going to do the Marauding Blight Priest as well. And we don't get any more triggers. Well, we get the LS, LS Elkorn trigger or whatever it is. It gets a Mechanized Warfare. That's going to be very annoying. I probably could have blocked with the army if I well, I, I probably could have blocked with the army just so I can get more triggers and more advantage because it would have allowed me to gain the life. We're still going to block with it anyways to get rid of the Gore Girl. Hopefully when we do, good, because that card's very annoying. And we get double triggers off of Lasso Core, and he does a smash to dust. That's really annoying. We just lost all of our advantage, I guess. We do have the Smothering Tithe for later, though, which is going to be all right. And let's see what we can do here. From this point onward, I think we have the upper advantage in case he gets anything really dumb, but he only has three lands, which is perfect for us. I think he's really reliant on his Ragavan. We get a bunch of triggers off of the Horn of Valhalla. He says, good game. I think we got it from here because of how this deck's going. I think he just wants the Ragavan triggers to get treasure, but he can't get any damage with it. And there's Sulfin. That's also very annoying because it does even more damage. We're going to do the Horn of Valhalla here. We're going to have a 16-16 coming in. I don't think he's going to do anything about it. He's just going to block it with a 1-1. Let's see if he does anything from this point. He only has four lands to work with, which is not ideal for that kind of deck. He does a Banefire, dealing us some damage. We get the Leonin War Leader out here. All the Priest going on, and we're going to swing in and win the game there. Game five, our hand is looking really good. We have some really good cards in our hand with the uh, Hallowed Priest, and we also have the Adeline. We did get a Zillaport Cutthroat. We're going to do the Lasso Core here instead. Let's see if he does anything about our commander, which he does with the Gift of Fangs, getting rid of it. That's a little annoying. He's going to swing in with a 1 1. He gets Lifelink off of it, so he gets another life. We're going to do the Adeline right here. Let's see if he does anything about it because he is running Death Colors. I don't think he's going to kill anything so far. Hopefully, he doesn't. And then he's going to do a Vampire of Dire Moon, which is a little annoying because, I mean, he just has two things with Lifelink and one of them has Death Touch. We're going to do the Elastic Core again. We also have the Jadar, so we're going to do a Hollow Priest or Jadar next turn, or Hollow Priest and then Zillaport Cutthroat next turn, or Jadar and then Zillaport Cutthroat. Either one of those combinations. I think we're going to go the Hollow Priest route just to get some extra triggers so our Hollow Priest can get a little bit buffer. And we get some more triggers because of Jadar is creating a 2 2. He gets an Edgar out there, which is annoying, and the Cordial Vampire. That's a very, very, very annoying card because it's just pure advantage for that. So let's see if we can get around it because that's going to be very annoying without having any straight removal in our hand. 
So he blocks both of it. We're going to get a bunch of triggers off of our Pillarless Plunder and the Cordial Vampire triggers as well. Great. He just gets a bunch of plus and plus one counters every time something dies or Cordial Vampire dies, which is just so fun. He gets a Indulgent Artist or Activist or whatever it is, and it has Lifelink. So it's a 6-6 six, six with, six, six with Lifelink. Then he also gets the Gifted Aetherborn out there which is just more annoyance that's so fun we're gonna get the liliana out here and we're going to make him sacrifice something because that's just going to be annoying we're going to get rid of the pitiless plunder and the decayed probably because the pitiless plunder isn't doing much now that we have quite a bit of mana out there so we're going to get rid of both of it and let's see what he gets rid of because if he doesn't get rid of the cordial vampire it does nothing and he just gets more triggers which he why would he do it anyways it gets an Edgar trigger, it just transforms itself, and then it comes back later. So that's just great. We're going to get the Esper Sentinel going on for us here. We get another Elasal Core trigger. So in case he does cast any non-creature spells, we can get some extra card advantage if he doesn't pay anything for it. And our Hollowed Priest is the only thing that's really going for us that can block and kill that he anything that he has out there. So it's going to be very annoying to see what he, he can do here. So... He does the indulgent aristocrat that's what it is instead of not the indulgent activist he gets the cordial vampire more triggers we get the shieldred let's see what he sacrifices he's probably going to sacrifice the gifted aetherborn because that's really what's not really doing anything for him we're going to get the liliana we're going to get another just a 2-2 black zombie out there we're going to get another elasal core trigger we're going to swing in with i don't know if we're gonna swing in actually i mean it does give us some advantage but it doesn't give us enough for what he's doing and then there's soren okay this has just changed the game because we get the divine visitation because he didn't pay for esper sentinel fantastic so we do have something that's not going to basically lose us the game because we get a bunch of four four angels and we drew veto this is just going really good for us because of how Cordial Vampire works. Nothing really goes good for us, but this is actually really good. So we're going to get the Divine Visitation. We're going to get a 4-4 four, four with a Vigilance and Flying. So that's going to be really annoying for him to deal with. And we can get rid of the Soren. He does double block just to get the Life Link. So he gets 17 life, which is quite a lot. But I think we still can be able to swarm him a little bit. We get the Cruel Celebrant out there so we can get some extra triggers. And off of our Jadar, we just create the 4-4 four, four Angels with Vigilance. It's perfect. And our Adeline allows us to create even more Angels it's just overall really really good so let's see if we can do anything about it or if he can really do anything about it because it's very annoying we can just block with a 2-2 zombie that we have out there because of our last liliana trigger he gets a cordial vampire trigger which is fine he just gets more tokens but i don't really care because we get the veto out there perfect and we might as well put the smothering tithe and we'll make another 4-4 angel we're going to swing him with all four of them because he has no flyers so he's going to go down to 45 life and let's see if he does anything about this because this is swarming quite a bit and if we can get something that even creates more tokens like the catcher's monument next turn or if we can create double tokens hopefully we can get something like the anointed procession he swings with everything that he has basically and i think we'll just block with everything so we take no damage here he does get 22 life which is a lot of life and we does get a lot of triggers off a of marauding blight priest and thank goodness he doesn't have veto because that would have killed us because of the 22 life that he has we get the liliana dreadhorde general triggers here he gets a bunch of triggers for his cordial vampire and we're going to i don't know we can get the noited procession and that's game five so overall this deck performed well really well i mean elastal core is a very annoying commander to deal with because it just gives us so much advantage and then cards such as tasa karlov would have been a great com card to come into effect liliana dreadhorde general was absolutely annoying to deal with for anybody and having cards like divine visitation basically just won us the game because the last game that we just had it was basically our game winner because cordial vampire would have killed us and that's really it it's just creating a bunch of tokens and getting a bunch of triggers off of cards like marauding blight priest or cards like veto it's a very very well-rounded deck because of how little the commander costs because it's only a two drop really and then once our commander is out there our whole gameplay is going i mean it would be broken if it was a one drop or even a three drop i mean i would have took it if it was a three drop but it's just perfect that it's a two drop and then we can get even more triggers off of it so overall it was a really fun deck to play with i would highly recommend building it and thank you for watching